Hello, this is Mr. Kenyanola, and I'm going to help you solve for x. Assume the lines which appear tangent are tangents, but I'm going to help you solve for x. So, uh, if you look at this problem right here, um, it's the x is on this segment, so we're trying to find a length. We're not trying to find angle measures or arc measures, so we're working with units, um, not degrees, but inches, feet, square, uh, inches feet or yards not squares but just length how long is this what's the distance from here to here uh, so if you guys uh, notice what are these two types of lines secants yes they are secant lines because these lines intersect the circle at two points here and here and here and here so what we're going to use is the intersecting secants theorem because these two secants intersect each other, okay? Um, don't get this confused with uh, the intersecting tangents theorem because uh, these lines aren't tangents and these are congruent to each other. So intersecting secants theorem, if you need a refresher on how those how that works or why it works and how they got it, look at the previous video in this playlist. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna show you three examples of these types of problems. Okay, so if uh, you remember the intersecting secants theorem is um, you, you're going to multiply this entire line, okay, times the piece that's on the outside, so this, and set it equal to the entire line segment and multiply it with the piece on the outside. So red times green is equal to the red times green. Uh, so we're going to take a pen or a pencil. We'll multiply this, uh, well, we'll do green times red, doesn't matter either either order. So green, which is eight, times the red, this entire length right here, don't put eight X, okay? It's eight plus X, okay? And some people are gonna put eight times X for this entire side, no. It's the piece on the outside times the entire segment, okay? You might be confused when the, the, the segments intersect on the inside of the circle, that's a different formula. But for this, when they intersect on the outside, it's green, the outside times the red, the entire thing is equal to the outside times the entire thing. Okay, now it's equal to, okay, green, which is seven, times the red, the entire thing, seven plus nine, uh, which is 16, okay? And now we'll just do some algebra. We're gonna take this eight and distribute it here and here because we can't combine anything inside the parentheses. So eight times eight is 64 plus eight times x is eight x is equal to seven times 16. Get our calculators, I think it's 132, but, uh, oh, it's 112, so it's 112. Yeah, 112, sometimes my mental math is incorrect. That's why we have a calculator, so 112. And now we're gonna get all the numbers on one side, so we're gonna subtract this 64 on both sides, so 112 minus 64 is 48 is equal to 8x. And the last step, this is multiplying, so opposite of multiplication is division, and x equals six, six, yeah, so six. And there's your final answer for this problem right here. All right, our next example. You want to press pause and draw this in your notebooks go for it otherwise i'm going to go so uh again we're going to take the entire segment and multiply it by the segment on the outside and set it equal to the entire segment times the segments on the outside so uh let's take the red times the green is equal to the red times the green Here's our red, so we'll start off on with this segment right here. Uh, red, which is x times the green, which is an x times 13 or 13x. Uh, it's x plus 13 is equal to seven times the entire segment, which is 20. Four. So uh, we're going to do this. This is the side you set it up. Now we're just going to do some algebra. Again, don't uh, multi don't make it so that 7 times 17 is equal to x times 13. That's for 
when the lines intersect on the inside, but they intersect on the outside. So this is how we set it up. Uh, so let's distribute x times x is x squared. Uh, don't be don't be um, intimidated by that square. It's okay. X times thirteen is thirteen x is equal to seven times twenty four, which is a hundred and sixty eight. Okay, now uh, we're going to take this uh, take this 168 and bring it to the other side so that this quadratic, it's a quadri quadratic when you have a square there, so subtract it. And it doesn't go under any particular term, so we'll just put it over here. And we'll bring everything down. So x squared plus 13x minus 168 is equal to zero. All right, now we're going to factor this. Um, so the quick way, so you could do a few things. You could do quadratic formula. You could complete the square. You can uh, X factor. I think for this, for my preference is to X factor because here's the A, here's the B, and here's the C. And when A is just that invisible one, we could find our task is just to figure out two numbers that multiply to negative 168 and uh, adds up to 13. All right, so this one's a tricky one. What are two numbers that multiply to 168? Uh, 7 and 24. Um, okay, uh, let's see what else is uh, 168. Yeah, so let's see that. Okay, so, uh, but, so let's take 168 and let's see if 9 goes into 168. Nope, 168 uh, divided by 4. 42, that's kind of a large number. Uh, 168 divided by 8 is 21. This right here uh, looks promising. Let's try 21 and 8. Uh, so 21 and 8. The reason why I chose that is because uh, with the powers of mental math, well, these two numbers don't multiply to negative 168. So we'd have to make this one of these numbers a negative number because we want it to be a negative. And when we add these two, we want the sum to be a positive. So we're going to make the smaller of the two numbers a negative. Okay, so 21 times negative 8 is negative 168. 21 minus 8 is 13, if you don't believe me. There, now believe me. Okay, so now we're gonna, going to rewrite this as a, two, a pair of parentheses. We're going to write x and x over here, and we're going to take these two numbers and put them here. We're going to put x plus 21 and x minus 8 equals 0. Um, and if you distribute this here, 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 and here, you'd get this equation. Um, if you could hear my dog, just ignore him. The mailman's probably there. So uh, let's solve this. So what we're going to do is use the zero product property. We're going to set this parentheses equal to zero, and we're going to set this parentheses equal to zero. And we're going to solve these as two separate equations. So this right here, to get x by itself, we're going to subtract 21 on both sides. So x equals negative 21. And on this side, we're going to add 8 to both sides. And so x equals 8. And then you may uh, be so eager to box both answers, say, hey, we have two answers. But really, we only have one answer. Because if we plugged in this negative 21 into here, we'd have a negative distance. And we can't get have a negative distance so our only answer for this is just eight so x equals eight all right and the third and final example solve for x assume that lines which appear tangent are tangent uh, so we have a secant okay uh, because it intersects the circle twice and we have a tangent line because it only intersects once but it's okay, we're going to use the same formula, the same theorem, the intersecting secants theorem, even though this isn't a secant, uh, but it's still the same concept. Okay, so we're going to multiply the entire segment times the segment on the outside, okay? 
or the segment on the outside with times the entire segment, whichever order you want. And then we're gonna multiply the segment on the outside times that entire segment. So we're still using the same concept. So let's use, uh, let's let's work on this one first. So the entire, uh, well, the, the segment on the outside, the red, which is just X, times that entire segment, which is five plus X, okay? Don't multiply, don't put five X, don't just put five, it's the entire thing. Five plus this is equal to, okay? Now the segment on the outside for this one is six, times the entire thing, which is coincidentally six. And let's do some math. So six times six is 36. On this side, let's distribute these two. So x times five is five x. X times x is x squared. Now we have a quadratic because we have a squared. So let's get this entire equation to equal zero by subtracting this 36 on both sides. Now let's reorder it. So let's put 30, uh, let's put x squared first. Then let's put 5x. Then let's subtract that 36 and set it equal to zero because the 36 uh, isn't like terms with any of these. So there we go. And then uh, let's factor it. So let's do that little x again and figure out two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add up to four. Um, let's see, let's try this out. Let's try nine. Oh, sorry, not, f not four, oops, five. So negative 36 and adds up to the b term, which is five. So let's try nine and four. But nine times four doesn't multiply to negative 36. So let's make this a negative. Nine times negative four is negative 36. And nine minus four adds up to positive five. So there's our two uh, numbers that we're going to use. We'll, we'll, now we'll have our pair of parentheses. Uh, we'll write x plus nine and x minus four. Again, if you don't believe me that this is the correct factoring of this right here, then just distribute this, this, and this, and then you should get that um, again. So then set this parentheses equal to zero, set this parentheses equal to zero, and we'll just solve this one right here. Zero equals x plus nine. If we subtracted the nine from both sides, we would have x equals negative nine. And for this one, we'll add four on both sides. So we'd have x is equal to four. Don't box both of them. Make sure that both of them work. Um, would it make sense to have a negative distance? Nope. So our answer, this would not be one of our answers. Would it make sense to have a positive distance? Yeah. So um, there you go. And if you want to really make sure that this is the correct answer, if we plug this in, Okay, uh, we, we just use the intersecting segments theorem. Four times the entire thing is nine. Four times nine is 36 is equal to six times six, which is 36. So four does work. Um, so there are three examples using the intersecting segments theorem. It even works when one of those lines isn't even a, a, a secant. Um, what was I saying intersecting se segments? Intersecting secants theorem. Yeah, so it works even when they're not secants, they're just, it's a tangent. So yeah, there's how it works. I hope that helps. Thanks.